Well, many who knew Ian and Diane Stewart say they seemed like the perfect family, loving, caring, centred around their children. But when Ian Stewart was jailed for Helen Bailey's murder, suspicion over Diane's death began to mount. Kate Bradbrook has been speaking to neighbours about their memories of that June day in 2010. It just seemed like a perfect, um, just a perfect happy family unit. Um, you know, it was so obvious how much they loved their boys, particularly, particularly Diane. Diane was just so full of her, her boys and I guess like, like most mums, we would particularly be talking about our kids, as you do as parents. And they had two boys, we had two boys. The Eastons had been neighbours of Diane and Ian since the early 90s. They'd had dinners together, been to each other's houses, and looked after each other's pets. She's just really caring, loving, and uh, very friendly, very out, out, you know, outgoing, um, not over the top, just always smiling, always bubbly, very kind. We were joking about having firework parties, or whatever, and then I thought, oh, yeah, we'll do it. And it went year after year. And we would have um, Diane and Ian and the boys to that, and other neighbours. On the day Diane died, Vanessa had come home from work to find an ambulance outside the Stewart's house. Unbe just unbelievable. The policewoman uh, said um, that uh, Diane had died suddenly. Another neighbour, Victor Nixon, remembers the day vividly. He helped direct paramedics after the air ambulance landed in a field close to his house. And we just, no questions, we just shouted and told them which way to come and they came through and I obviously followed them and as I came with them and I could see that it was Diane was lying on her back and they were doing CPR and my heart stopped, you know, sort of metaphorically and realised that there was something serious and at the same moment I felt I was intruding, I was about to move away, I saw them do a thumbs down and shaking their heads in answer to questions of the arriving paramedics. One was... Um, put his arms around Ian, uh, who was showing signs of stress and concern. That's... How unexpected was this? Oh, it was terribly unexpected. She was such a... And the funeral and uh, church commemoration that followed that was, was overwhelming sorrow. At the time, Diane's death was thought to be related to epilepsy. Only after husband Ian was convicted of killing fiancé Helen Bailey did police re-examine the case? She was well. I mean, I knew about the epilepsy. Um, fine, it was well controlled. I'd never known her to have had a fit. Um, I remember thinking at the time, oh, th that's really, thank goodness there's no blood. You know, because I thought, well, she's lying on the concrete on the patio. There's nothing, she looks, she looks perfect. We, I mean, we certainly had our suspicions after um, uh, Helen's death. Then we all immediately thought, started to review our own memories of, of the day with Diane. And we started to think, my God, you know, that could have been, was that a real death? You know, was, was that a genuine sudden death? When Ian Stewart went on trial for killing Diane, it brought it all back for those who were close to Helen Bailey. Stuart was jailed for drugging and suffocating his wealthy fiance at the home they shared in Royston in 2016, six years after his wife's death here in Bassingbourne. Margaret Holson was one of Helen and Ian's neighbours in Royston. She became close to Helen in the months before her death. I feel, feel for the poor little woman and the boys that I got to know a little bit. Um, and also the main thing makes me really angry to think that had more been done to find out what happened to her, then my friend Helen would still be here. I mean, Ian had so much. He had a loving, loving family. He had a wonderful life. He just didn't know how lucky he was and people would give their eye teeth to be in, to have been in his position with a, a really happy, loving wife, fantastic 
you know, mom and um, homemaker. You know, what do you say? I mean, she, she was so proud of her family, so why throw it all away? Kate Bradbrook reporting there and you can find more information about this extraordinary case on the BBC News website.